The Phantom Liberty expansion is here. Alongside a huge, huge update to Cyberpunk 2077, it rocks. Amen to that. I've went and got all the achievements and endings, and I'm ready to talk about Phantom Liberty. Who the fuck are you? Let's start with, this expansion complements Cyberpunk quite well. Solid main story with a few unique missions and endings tied to your decisions, pretty fun and interesting side quests, and an entirely new district, Dogtown, with some more unique darker environments. Looking at the map, it's not huge compared to the size of the original game, but it is denser than a game as mega pack of potato chips as a land party. I should send you back to Night City in body bags. So, returning to my cyberpunk character three years later, I felt like watching an anime without any subtitles. I had no idea what was going on. I was a bit overwhelmed with all my skill points reset and my mess of an inventory, so I made an entirely new character, and I chose to start directly in the Phantom Liberty expansion. This is something you could do with The Witcher 3's expansions too, and I wish more single player games let you choose to do this. Keanu Reeves is back as Johnny Silverhand. I can confirm he's still breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. And Johnny continues the banter. How many fingers am I holding up? We've also got Idris Elba doing an awesome job playing Solomon Reed. My name's Reed. Special Agent and his role in the story depends entirely on your decisions. Let's get down to business. So, Phantom Liberty starts with a special mission to save the president that's crash landed in Dogtown. The president? Fuck. <laughs> because when your president crashes, you don't just dial rescue services, you send a one man wrecking crew with enough upgrades to make Iron Man blush. You'll play through a very linear and restrictive introduction. And to be honest, this first hour or two was probably the weakest part of Phantom Liberty. I was enjoying myself a lot more once I progressed out of that introduction. Dogtown is an entirely new district in Night City. It's a messy, rundown district, but atmospheric with crumbling remnants of what the place could have been. Dogtown's walled off from the rest of Night City. It's almost a city within a city, where the police dare not step foot in. Instead, it's run and policed by the Militech organization. Lots of hidden gems, we've got the lovely Heavy Hearts Club on Murder Street and right next to Shank Avenue. So, we gonna have a problem? This is where the desperate go, a good place to hide from the police. From the start of Phantom Liberty, it's very apparent this place is dangerous, and the citizens aren't exactly helpful and talkative. Don't talk to me. It's not huge compared to the original Cyberpunk's map, but it makes up for it in density and verticality. Hey Quickie, trying to grow the channel, any likes or subs would be an amazing help. I really want to level up my subscriber count because that's going to unlock early review copies of games. By the time I get this video out, the world's moved on from Cyberpunk to Lords of the Fallen or whatever is happening now, so it would be really nice to get access to games earlier. Thank you. Phantom Liberty comes with an entirely new relic branch of the skill tree. These are some very specific but overpowered passive upgrades. These new upgrades cost relic points, and you'll earn a few of these through the story. We can also find more by taking the time to explore and parkour around Dogtown. Parkour! So alongside the Phantom Liberty expansion, we've also got a massive update to Cyberpunk 2077. Three years ago, Cyberpunk had a notoriously bad launch, borderline unplayable and broken for a lot of players. At the time I had a pretty great PC and it ran okay, but it still felt like an unfinished game. But with this 2.0 update, it actually feels like a fully functional and finished game now. Hmm, yeah. All swell now though. And I'm actually playing this on the exact same hardware as I did three years ago, and there's definitely a noticeable improvement in performance. Now I don't have to feel ashamed of my Cyberpunk Collector's Edition I dropped a stupid amount of money on. So, while technically this update isn't part of Phantom Liberty, it still affects your experience. For one, the presentation of the skill tree has been overhauled and works pretty great. I genuinely couldn't decide whether to put my skill points into being a netrunner that can hack enemies, or going with more crazy mobility and melee skills. They were just two really awesome different ways I wanted to play, and either way I felt so overpowered. Another notable update, I no longer get spam called by loads of different characters all at once. It used to be really annoying having people nagging me to do their side quests. These phone calls are much better spread out now and there's an option to skip them entirely. So throughout Phantom Liberty's campaign, you'll be told to wait a few days or do so many side quests or gigs to continue. Now, you can sleep to fast forward this, but I took these opportunities to explore Dogtown. And I've got to admit there were some pretty interesting and entertaining side quests. 
One example that stood out, this guy was brain dancing. Brain dancing allows people to relive others' experiences from their point of view. There was a power surge while this guy was brain dancing, and now they're stuck thinking they're the person they were brain dancing. Lina Malina is a registered trademark, you fucking copycat bitch! There is some more generic stuff like your typical stealing rare cars and delivering them to drop off points. The game now also features level scaling, and let's be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of it. After you've progressed, it's nice to go back and curb some enemies that you used to find challenging. Level scaling is like having your grandma enter a marathon and being able to keep up with the Olympic sprinters. But here's the surprise. In Phantom Liberty, I barely noticed the scaling, and to my relief, it did not negatively impact my experience. Gonna be a game to remember. Don't want to reveal too much about Phantom Liberty's main story. Idris Elba as Solomon Reed is a fantastic addition and it really levels up the storytelling. He gets to jump on you and interrogates you from behind in public. Even though you can only hear his voice, you instantly know who it is and it's exciting. This dark town. Don't turn around. Eyes on the court. Reed's role in your story is completely determined by the decisions you make. I really like the choices and decisions you're presented with. They're not black and white, there's not an obvious morally good and bad option, and I'd be stuck wrestling with what the best decisions would be. Fuck if we know. While Phantom Liberty's main campaign is reasonably sized, there's a lot of replayability to be had. Actually, I recommend replaying the game and checking out some of the alternative decisions you could have made, especially in the second half of Phantom Liberty, because they completely shift the tone of the story and the missions you'll do. There's surprisingly a lot of work being put into the alternative paths that you'll not fully see from just one playthrough. I played on my trusty PC and Steam Deck. Now, I prefer playing first-person games with the precision of keyboard and mouse, but gotta love the portability with going handheld on the Steam Deck. Runs reasonably well, had to change launch options and make a few performance tweaks like lowering a few graphic settings, but I got there, it was great, and it just goes to show how much Cyberpunk 2077 has improved. From its infamous launch where it was completely broken and unplayable for a lot of players, it got so bad I remember Sony taking Cyberpunk off its digital PlayStation store. They refused to sell it and they offered refunds. Now here I am playing this on a handheld with no problems and only three years later. Rust in peace, shitbot! So if you're returning to just exclusively experience Phantom Liberty, yeah, it's pretty good, like ordering some nice dessert, but doing Cyberpunk 2.0 and Phantom Liberty together is like a full-course meal, dessert and wine. I'll have a double cheeseburg while you're at it. My recommendation is to do it all. Maybe you didn't finish Cyberpunk originally with the jank and bugs. Give Cyberpunk 2.0 another try. I'm hoping to do a video on how the Cyberpunk Edrunner show impacted my experience with Cyberpunk. Something a bit different, but that's my plan. But my plans always end up changing, so we will see what ends up happening. Peace for now.